Guys, welcome. It's Shut Up Mark. This is one. This is the first episode we're recording. When it comes out, I don't know. Which is probably going to be, I would say, what, a couple weeks, right? I'm here today. Our first guest, Steve, our first guest. You're the first guy ever on the show, right? Like first that. guy to do the weight lift ever. It's a, it's I a, love you're, being first. I you're love a man being of first. first. You're like you're, you're first to pretty much everything, guys. Steve Cardillo, Everett Mass legend, bodybuilding, weightlifting, fitness, uh, pioneer, inventor. I could I could glaze you up and down, Steve, but like you've done pretty much all of it in this sport, man. Yes. This lifestyle, this culture, however you want to word it, right? Yes. How's um now you're at this point in your career, right? Like, tell us where you just came from that you just told us off camera, which is the coolest shit that we've ever heard. Get, lead us in. Thank you to our sponsor, Dave's Hot Chicken, one of the fastest growing restaurant franchises in the entire country. Started in 2017, East Hollywood. They're now in New England, popping up once a month, really. Most recently in Manchester, New Hampshire. Coming up next in, I want to say, I don't know if I can actually say it's Medford, Mass, Wellington Circle. That's where they're going. Uh, Dave's Hot Chicken, primary sponsor on the show. Not to be colluded by Top Dog Law, uh, one of the premier injury law firms in the country, up and down the East Coast, out to Chicago, out to L.A., Reach out to, if you've been injured, you know somebody at work hurt somewhere doing anything out in public, wherever it is. Somebody injured, call Top Dog Law immediately. Start getting the justice you deserve. Start working towards the compensation you deserve. Well, just got back from uh, Clearwater, Florida. Did an episode with Hulk Hogan for my new TV show. And um, no, that's, that's pretty like, so that's like just like. <laughs> that's the most casual statement of all time, by the way. Just like, yeah, yeah I just got back from Clearwater. For, uh, is he live down there? Yeah, we've been friends for oh, uh, close to 40 years. Now, you met him what year? Do you remember specifically? Yeah, nine, probably 19, 1990, World Gym of Somerville, Pacatino. Wow, okay, so it, before we go into what we just talked about, yeah. the Massachusetts gym scene back 70s, 80s, you know, late yep. 70s, 80s, yep. 90s, it was like a big friggin' fucking deal back in the day, right? Like the the, the way it would go would be World's Gym in Somerville for sure. the workouts. Okay, had to go. That's where everyone went. Pat would lay it out for them. I'd get the call from Pat. Hey, Randy's here. Hulk's here. They want belts. Yada yada. He knew I was making the belts. Got you. I'd go down, size them up. I was training. I was in my peak shape, conditioning. I was strong as a strong back then. Mm -hmm. So I would get to train with them, make the belts, form a relationship. Okay. And that's kind of where it's at. Then from the, the two hitting spots for the wrestlers are World's Gym in Somerville, which before then was Galaxy. Okay. To World's, then to the Kowloon. The, right? The Kowloon has been the spot for the wrestlers that's for it. like Forever. a bill. So my generation of people, I'm 32, right? We all, like, it was a thing. Remember, like, after wrestling, yeah. you would go be go, able to, yeah. like, if, like, um, Raw or, or SmackDown yeah. was at the Garden or a pay-per-view, yeah. they'd all go up, hang out with the Wongs. Yeah. And then you were able to, like, meet them on the way out in the parking lot and maybe get, like, a quick yeah. picture on a fucking disposable camera and shit. So when we taping the show, he mentioned his, well, that's his top Chinese restaurant, the Kowloon. He's still, and he he, he appreciates, really? he, yeah, giving back. Like, he knows I would, I would never ask any of these guys. They'd ask me for belts. I'd hook up him, the sons, uh, um, what's his name? Nick? Yeah, yeah, Nick Hogan, but I'm talking, uh, like, all the wrestler's sons now. Oh, oh I thought you meant Brian Pillman. Pillman. So, yeah. Brian Pillman, I made it for his son now. He's the king. Yeah. So, it goes in generations now, which I've hooked them all up. So, same thing, like, with the Kowloon, they all. So, just, all the pro wrestler kids that come up, pretty much. Yes. So, you're with, like, Bobby Roode's kid? Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 Rick uh, Roode. Rick Roode. You yeah. go with... Uh, um, Trying to think of who else... Um, uh, even somebody like uh, Natalia. Von, Von Erichs, yeah. Yeah, the oh, Von Erichs, yeah, right, Natalia. Brett. Yep. Natalia, uh, her father, uh, like Jimmy three Neidart. weeks before he died. Oh, God, rest his soul. The anvil. I made him a badass, and I couldn't get it done, customized quick, and I had to paint it for him. And yep. it was like his prized possession, and he passed away. He's We're, a, uh, Jimmy Neidhart was like, th that guy, like, w paint me a wrestler, yeah. and it's that dude. Yeah. The big goatee, yep. broad shoulder. He it wasn't was, like like ripped, you know, just yeah, a big, yeah, yeah, just dude. muscly yeah. dude, you know what great, I'm saying? There's a great story, great. Rick, I mean, everybody, all of them, Rick Flair, his daughter, Charlotte, you name it. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like you say to me, it's easier to say, who haven't you made it for? Yeah. We're talking Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon, Shane's sons. Wow. 
This is it, crazy it, stuff. It's endless. Man. Oh, she needs sunlight. Just, yeah, but every everybody, everybody. Question. So, from you as a guy who was like legitimately a professional bodybuilder, right? Fitness, everything. Wrestlers, physique. I have one pick that I think is the the guy who was in the best shape, whether he was natty or not. Yeah. Of any wrestler ever, I wanna I'm, I wanna know who you think. Big Papa Pump Pop right into it. Really? Scott Steiner? <laughs> oh, he, he was, was juiced he was, out of his face. You, you just said either way. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, you're right. I guess that's right. Yeah. Are you going on size alone? Like, is that something where you like, was, I want a guy in that's person, like... In person, he was freaky. Really? Yeah, really. Does freaky. it look unnatural, though, in person? Yeah, yeah. He was freaky. Right. Yeah. His bicep was like a... Uh, that was his yeah. thing. His bicep was almost like pointed a little bit. Yeah, I was he, like, was, he was wild. My pick would be Rick Rude. Yeah, oh yeah. I think Rick Rude just had, like, if I could pick a guy's body to, like, have. You're going for the uh, fitness guys, fitness Yeah, Yeah. he was more like a a shredded, like, Superman type of belt. Also going with the uh, Von Erichs, Kerry Von Erich. Yeah. Made his belt. Okay. He was, that's some wild stories there. Obviously, the documentary. Yep. Um, I see all these things, these documentaries, and I kind of have more insight. So I kind of look at things differently, like, you know, when it comes to Randy. Randy Savage, they kind of paint him as being, you know, frugal with his right. money and stuff. He's probably one of the most. Why gentle. do they say that in every documentary? Anything I watch on YouTube okay, with like him and Mr. Like, like be, I don't understand. Because he was a money maker. Mm-hmm. Everyone else below is wrestling for two hundred fifty dollars a match. We were my nephew and I peed at WrestleMania. We were one of the Druids when they were in Boston years ago. Mm-hmm. You see all the big guys in line collected two hundred fifty bucks. So you had the Randys back then, you had your Hulks making good money. So all these guys going out expecting the guy who makes the most amount of money to pay, that ain't the case. He would pay if you weren't looking for him to pay, but they're all freeloading off him. Yeah, you can't be that guy that's like, you're looking at but the that's same what dude to pick. Yeah, that's I know what they are. So yep. my relationship with him was, um, so how cheap he wasn't gave me you know tons of his wardrobe. He took all of his stuff when he retired. His wardrobe is worth millions. Oh, he Million. had the fucking jackets with Everything. the tassels and fl- fur. So he gave me a bunch of his stuff, but the mo- all of it went to charity for kids. Never told about it all. This is going to give oh, awesome. it to that a charity. That either. was all his stuff. So he had a, uh, I thought it was a silver, big, huge dog collar on, right? Ch- chain. And so the thing was cool as shit. So I said, hey, Randy, he was in, he was in I'd get on the tamper and call on my big accounts, champs, galleons, the big guys down there. So he would call me down. He was getting ready for Spider-Man. So I trained him for two weeks, preparing for Spider-Man. We trained. That is probably, that's arguably the best cameo, by the way, in movie history, by the way. Yeah. Him just randomly showing up at the beginning of Spider-Man is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Like, that's hilarious. Yeah, so we trained for two weeks together. We'd fly out to L.A., we go get his all his hair extensions. I'm behind the scenes of how they're doing the movie. I made the belt for me. He, the belt, my belt is in the movie with him. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so we had this awesome. big badass chain, silver. I thought. So I said, "Hey, Randy." He went home. I said, "You mind if I borrow that chain? I want to get it duplicated." He goes, "Yeah, no problem." So he sends it up to me. I'm wearing the thing all over the place. It's bad as shit. So I finally go to the jeweler, and the jeweler goes, "Dude, this is platinum. It was like two pounds of fucking platinum." I said. Give me it back, put it right back in the box, send me a bracelet to go with the whole the whole gimmick. So I sent it back. He said, I, no, I was gonna give I was giving you that, man. I said, no way. He said, he said, Yeah, you could have kept it. Wow. I said, keep it. I don't want Dude. I don't want a two pound platinum. Yeah. I that's let Pete like... wear a piece. We're, we're throwing on like a piece of silver. Yeah, that's So if crazy. I lost it, I'd say, Hey Randy, I lost your chain. No one's platinum. I put it right back in the box. But he said, No, dude, you could have kept it. That's unreal. And I wasn't gonna say, Hey, send it back. <laughs> she was an awesome guy like that. The best. Yeah. We would go out for lunch, dinner, he'd always pay. That that's all that's just a bunch of He was a hell of an athlete too before he got into wrestling. Baseball, okay. He, didn't he get dra- did he get drafted by the Reds or he got he okay. signed like a pro tryout, something he like that? He was a catcher. Yep. Caught lefty through righty. Yeah, that's right. Blew out his shoulder. Five hundred tennis balls a day with kids, he'd get him off the streets. Five hundred taught himself how to throw lefty, catch righty, played first baseman, and still played minor leagues. He crazy. That guy like and his brother, right? Yep, Lanny. Lan- yeah, yep. right. They both, because uh, he's from where? Cincinnati? Yep. Right, he's from I Ohio. They're, um, he's one of those guys that like went through wrestling that was like a, like a genuine, like ath- not that wrestlers aren't athletes, but And his I'm father, saying, Angelo, was, yeah. he has a world record sit-ups. I made his championship belt for him. He was, Randy wanted to make him a belt, uh, the Ripley, believe it or not, world champion sit-up. I think they buried him in it. Are you serious? Yeah, they, he loved it. That's awesome. His mother loved me. So they were just like... Like built like that, they were just yeah, they, athletically. Yeah, they, yeah, but they're 
they one percent is they want to be great. They want to be good. They they want to be you know not bad for three greases, huh? That's that's pretty awesome. I yeah. gotta say, between the three all, of them, they're great. The mother was great. She swam till she was like eighty nine years old. Oh, summer. so they just like had it in they their blood. They were it. just and they were very quiet people. Great people. Yeah, they were great. Him and Hulk, great to me. That's great. awesome. Great. What now? Hulk was. He was a football, like, he, I'm pretty sure he was a D-tackle uh, or a lineman for... I think uh, so, but he, he was more, gravi- he gravitated more to music. That's where he wanted to go with the He was more into re- music. Get out of here, seriously. Mm-hmm. He was at a, a goofy band or some shit, but, but then, he, then he got into wrestling, and then once uh, Rocky three, that took The Thunder him. Lips that thing, yeah. That, was, that cool. was the thing that kind of took him into the next realm, huh? Yep. 1980. Yeah, he, yeah that's, that was 1983, uh, 82-ish. Yeah, yeah, 80 was the first one. I think 83, too, he was the second. Yeah, three, right. So yeah. he, and you got to think he was. And that I, took him. I mean, I obviously, this is before I was born. I'm born 92, but he was the guy from, what, the mid-80s to friggin' the, the or, what, solid 10 years in yeah. the WWE, oh, yeah. right? Just yeah. like it was Hulkamania yeah. everywhere. He, he's, like I said, he's still, like people don't see his speed. Like we'd go, we'd go out to dinner bunch of people 10 people at a table sure. he would get up go into a room to be all these special needs kids like special needs olympics just at the restaurant he'd go in meet all the kids sign he wouldn't go in and say hey i'm going to do it he would just get up that's awesome do it come back tonight he's a great person that's awesome that's awesome and we all do stupid things make mistakes say stupid shit that don't define you no that's yeah, yeah that's, everybody's got yeah. bad moments if yeah, anything yeah, like just, please we i would all say up. stupid shit and do stupid shit and but at the end of the day he's an amazing person that's awesome no, that's good. Now, as far as your own fitness, bodybuilding journey, how did it start for you? And then, like, at what point were you like, I'm going to the next level, like, I'm making a bit at this? So, when I was, like, I don't know, 11, 12 years old, mm-hmm. I started I started lifting weights. Mm-hmm. But I was also playing hockey. I was a goalie. Okay, so, the whole thing with the, obviously, goalie, you know, supposed to lift, it slows you down. So, I was training... In the closet, right? Playing hockey, becoming good, real good, and then uh, long story short, by my junior year, I was probably the best, probably the the best in New England as a junior goalie. Goalie. This is it for the Everett Everett High. Everett High. Like gotcha. I was get I was getting bombarded. I was, uh, you know, top goal. I can talk about myself. Like I would never no talk well, I'm asking about you. myself. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Then. But now I can, you know, I was a top goalie in the state, hockey nights in Boston, top goalie, won the GBL. when that was a thing? Yeah, when you, when you, it was a major thing. So I got the top goalie, got the, played, played with Tommy O'Regan, Jerry August, all the, all, t- then they picked the top 20 out of all of the hockey nights in Boston. Bobby Carpenter was on the sophomore team. Got you. All right, so okay. now we're talking, we're talking a high level of hockey at that So point. my father played, my dad played at Columbus. Hockey. There you go, yeah. My dad gra- graduated '82. Bobby Carpenter went right Saint from St. John's, John's yep. Prep in '82 yep. or '81, and then went right to the Capitals. Right to the Capitals, right? And I think he's the isn't he the wasn't he the first American, American to score fifty goals? Yes. Yeah, so. It was his rookie year, yeah, though, right? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Was crazy. Yeah, he was on the, 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 still the top. So yep. this was so coming into my junior, coming to my senior year, coming off of the playing the t- top twenty in the state, we went and played all colleges. In the summer of my junior year, after they picked the Hockey Nights in Boston, top 20. So we travel around. Now, now coming to my senior year, I can only compare it to, like, uh, I don't know, I'm not a baseball player, but when they throw knuckleballs, okay? I was playing with these guys, Jerry August, Bobby Kopp, and these things are lasers, I'm, and I'm doing well. Now I come back to high school, and it's like slow motion. So starting out, coming out of the gate, I wasn't doing well. Yeah. Okay. So, it, but the coach thought I was cocky coming out of hockey nights and bars. Nothing to do with it. It was just slow motion. You you could anticipate the play, the shot. You know, playing with those guys was do it, react, hit it. Oh, so Hair, fast. Too much time yeah. to think. I wasn't doing well. Mm. I admit I wasn't doing well. But when it came to practice, they having two, three on O's. I'd stop them. I'd stop them because I backed the fast again. Mm-hmm. So they changed the goalie out. The kid played well. He was doing well. I would see, keep trying and trying and trying. I had a, I had a uh, verbal commitment to Boston College. Wow. 
So at the at BUBC, it was, I was getting dropped, uh, looked at by everybody, mm -hmm. but I wanted to go to Boston College. So I had their verbal, back then it was Saglaski and Cedar Chuck. I played with the, the top 20 in the state. Mm -hmm. I was the goal. They wanted me in the net because they wanted to recruit me. So I made the commitment in the whole nine yards. Now when I'm coming in, it started out slow. So it, long story short, I don't know, the coach, I'm realizing politics, the coach, I don't know what he said to them, whatever. I sat down almost my whole senior year. The team I played for hockey nights in Boston was uh, Salem State. Mm -hmm. Gilligan was a coach at Steve. You, you know, they, they had a rough season to even play. You come to Salem State, and this kid Trinulo, Trinulo doesn't show up here. You'll be the backup goalie to Jay Palladino. Jay Palladino, they had me being better than him my junior year in high school, and he was his soft his junior year at Salem State. Mm -hmm. So I'm better than him, really. Yeah. Right. But I'm in high school, right? Sure. So I go there. There's 16 goalies going off for the team. What? Yeah. So I said, "Holy shit!" So the last prior practice of the of the whole thing was um, the team, the 20 top players, like I was the year before, play against college teams. So those top 20, that's where Bobby Carpenter was playing. Now he was mm -hmm. on this team, and I'm playing for Salem, getting ready to play for Salem State. Right. Last play of the game, he comes down on a breakaway, deeks the shit out of me. I go one way, he goes the other way, I make a skate save. I make the save, I look up in the stands, it's the coach and Jay Palladino sitting together. How, how, why would Palladino want me to be on the team when they already said I'm better than him my yeah, junior right. in high school? So I realized there's shit going on. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It was an automatic JV thing, but I, I was going from Boston College, the pinnacle of hockey. Yeah. Yeah. To Salem State, looking up at the coach, saying, "You know, right." So you're know, at a you're at a junction point. At I'm just so I go in there. I go right after that. After I made right after the save was like two, a minute left all over. I go in. I said, "This isn't for me." So I thought you'd feel that way. I didn't get into it. In the meantime, there was a guy they were uh, trying, doing powerlifting. Probably within the first week, he was showing me I was already strong with him. The first week mm -hmm. after his guys from power, I was just I was strong. So I trained. I went. They I got. They gave me the budget for the. I trained the. I trained the weight room. I got to uh, be the guy at the weight room. Worked the weight room two thirty to four thirty. I got trained, paid to train, for four years. Got a budget. Wow. I was uh, two places away from all American because I went to try to become first place. If I pulled up the second place, I would. Long story short, within three years, I was already surpassing my hockey, which mm -hmm. obviously was a great thing. Had a budget. Train all national probably the only uh, the only one that came out of Salem State that way. I got more respect as being because I was a hockey player former, but I was stronger than yeah, I was. I was strong. So I kind of all it, it, this all definitely happened for a reason. For reason, yeah. Then uh, the belt was uncomfortable, and that's when I started thinking about designing a belt, and that takes us into the belt part of it. So it was the greatest thing that happened, obviously. Yeah, for sure. But I obviously loved hockey. But it was you know hockey, ho hockey and uh, lifting. What is when you went to design the belt yep what is give me the like the uh j just the sort of the physical uh like manifesto of this belt okay. like what were you like so when you first when you when you get a belt there a power belt is extremely stiff so everybody thinks like the stiffer the belt the more rigid like the better the belt but in the meantime it's uncomfortable it used to like when you get on the deadlift uh, you'd like get pinch your ribs and your hips oh, fuck that. it was horrible so i was more like the your baseball glove your hockey glove you break it in you it's that's your thing i'm the kind of guy also just to like compound upon what you're saying i need like loose fitting athletic everything i hate feeling tight, tight exactly. and constricted i cannot stand correct that. Continue, exactly please. so your stuff is so you know i want it soft yep so i designed a belt with a contour this and that and uh I ended up uh, approaching the company that makes the best in industrial linesman equipment in the world. So it was a perfect mix. We partnered up. Linesman, you're talking about the guys that install like power lines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah okay, so wow, okay. And all that yeah. stuff. So they were, they were, the, they're already, they're over 100 years in business now. So we teamed up, and the, the rest is history. And the fir now the first big belt you ever did for somebody was. Like who was Probably your... the wrestlers, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage. So Hulk, so Hulk, right, Hulk... Out in, right out of the gate. That was that was yeah. your first big John client. John Cena, I made John Cena's, but he wasn't a big thing. 
It right. was pre-big thing. So my first custom was Hard Knocks Jim and Amesbury. So can you tell us about Hard Knocks? Because I'm going to set the stage here for this. There's like, in high school, we used to hear about this Jim and Amesbury. Yeah. Oh, yeah which oh, is yeah. now revealed to be yeah. Hard Knocks. I yeah, never like hard. got the full story, yeah. but yeah. obviously Steve knows. Yeah. That like, you needed a key yeah. to get in. Yeah. Now that's a key gym. Key gym. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Can you... Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory. So the, so the way it goes is the gentleman that owned his name was Dave Knox. Yep. Okay. I would, I had a summer place up there when I was 12 years old. I went to him and said, Dave, here's Jim Open in 60s. So we're talking in 70, in the early 70s, right? So I go and she says, yeah, sure, you can come train here and kind of walk me through it. I was training in my house, but I, I this was my first gym. So he, we became very good friends even when i was 12 gave you the respect try to help you so on and so forth treated you like an adult like exactly a man and exactly was like, yeah you he was bringing you into the world of lifting now he was an ex he was a cop at the time but he owned the gym and then when i later on when i did the when i got the belt designed the belt he was my first customer i drive all the way from everett to amesbury one belt he'd take it just it became my first custom he was my first of almost everything when it came to lifting at the time the guy who really gave you a shot like in other words if i if i i don't know came up with a barbecue sauce and i was like yep. yeah all and right uh, the guy next door right here in this fucking convenience store is like yeah we'll sell you shit put it on the yes, shelf exactly it's kind of the same thing uh, yeah, yeah I got exactly you. okay so now at the meantime john cena is training out of there he's from west newburyport so he was uh, a genetic freak even like in his 20s like really re just really gifted so Dave introduced me to John because that was his protege and um, made his belts all the way through till not, till this day. And that's kind of, you know, hard knocks. And then years later, he passed away. Oh, Dave's passed, Dave's I passed know, away. Wow, yeah. So Dave passed well. away, I don't know, like, um, I don't know, eight, ten years ago. I don't know. It, time flies. I don't know. Right, yeah. But, right. So another guy opened it up. I didn't know who the hell he was. In the meantime, he sold it to a younger kid that used to train with my nephew Peter, mm -hmm. and they would have to be like, a, they were 11, 12 years old, competing against each other. Mm -hmm. Later on, he bought the gym, and now I'm re, re, re getting, kind of getting back and trying to help him out because it's the fourth oldest gym in the in North America. Really? And I, yeah, and it's probably out of the four of them, it's probably the real gym, the only one that's a real gym. Yeah. The other one's like Jack Lane gyms. You know, little cage. Jack LaLanne. <laughs> you remember that guy? Yeah, That's yeah, this. Yeah. For the younger people watching this podcast who don't know, Jack LaLanne was on TV for how many years? He was like well, 90 yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Right? With I remember the, as a kid dog, watching those. With the, that little dog. Yeah, yeah. I remember as a kid, it would come on like. I, didn't he do like juicing machines or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on when he was in it. That was his thing. Yeah, so that was thing. like his his like uh, his version of what, like a Fred George Foreman, Foreman grill exactly. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you and I were on the same page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he was like this guy. I mean, to be fair, that guy was fucking ripped in his not in like his eighties and nineties. Yes. He was still in really yeah. good shape. He was in great shape. He'd yep. swim with the boats, chain to him every year, add an extra boat to how long the distance he was going. Dude, people did like it, this is what I mean when I say like if content was around back in the day and people had cell phones, these guys would have oh, been yeah, no, 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 mega crazy, stars. Crazy, back in the day yeah. you used to have to what? See something on, on channel five. Yeah. At, at, at night and it was a special and this guy happened to be yeah. in, oh what see it in a magazine yeah, or some exactly. shit yeah you do you'd watch a there'd be a world championship fight you have to wait the next day to come out in the paper now it's instantaneously oh yeah absolutely this, this everybody's like, live and streaming everything and stuff like that now the bodybuilding world in the early days was like i said i feel like from what i hear from like my dad who wasn't a bodybuilder yeah. he just like the gym. Yeah, trained yeah it trained yeah exactly the, uh, it was like a f almost like a phenomenon around here in like the 70s and the 80s like everybody was like into the gym yes you know yes. what i mean and, and it, it was, was uh, you know i haven't been a gym in so long cause, since i had my own but you know everyone's taking selfies and setting up videos and i mean i, I can't i can't imagine trying imagine to, trying to navigate around a gym trying to do your yeah. shit and this, this this thing's there and this but this more worried thing. about how the exercise is looking than actually performing the now, exercise. Now, here's another thing as far as like gym culture and the whole social media content atmosphere. What is, I, I don't know how much you're actually like on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. Do you watch like bodybuilding content? Yeah, yes. Okay. On What's Instagram. The, what is the most commonly piece of like, like bad piece of advice that you see some of the, because a lot of people online don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Exactly. And a guy like you, who's a pro, must watch this stuff and be like, dude, I really hope people aren't taking this stuff and like doing that. Or like, uh, you know, whatever it is. You can't even, I can't even, 
it's just so it's all bizarre you know what i mean they're they're, they're like um it, you know over glorifying the amount of drugs they do just to some of the stuff they say they're doing why do people not want to say that they're on that they're taking juice no i i think back in my day, you would have less people trying to say they weren't on juice. They were more. Oh drug no, no. I, oh, I'm sorry. I was today, referring today, to now, yeah. today, they're all proud of being on. Which is, it doesn't matter. Who cares? It doesn't really matter. It's the culture of the sport. But right. when you start to tell a kid, I don't even know what some of this sh stuff they're talking about is, but it sounds pretty dangerous, right? This trend and all this shit. The so, yeah, trend is the new thing, and uh, like SARMs. Yeah. This other shit and stuff like that, where people. But, are Whatever, it's just, it, right. it, it, it's just, it's all a bunch of, like, they talk about protein, like, if I'm going to tell you, like, I did a study at Tufts on protein, and I did, stayed there 10 days at a hospital, I, I know what, how much protein, but yeah. they're saying all this stuff, but if you have, if you don't live it or do it, I'm not, I can't, I can't tell you something if I didn't do it myself, you know what I'm saying? So these people just talking, they just, it's just not, social media is crazy. Uh, another question about the fitness industry, specifically Mr. Olympia. Yeah, I know somebody you're probably familiar. Obviously, you, I'm sure you've met Arnold Schwarzenegger, yep. right? Yep. Can't can't yep. imagine. He has a very different opinion on how Mr. Olympia is judged now, as opposed to when it was when he competed. Now, this is back when you you know yep. started okay, getting yep. into bodybuilding yep. and stuff like that, because you see these guys yep. that are just what smoke smashing down the HGH. Yep. Their waist isn't where it's supposed to be yes. or where it was supposed to be required yes, for exactly. it to be. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Where do you stand on it? Because Arnold, I, I saw him on some podcast, and he was like, dude, if I wanted to see, like, bellies, like, I would right. go to, like, the maternity ward in a right. hospital. Right, How do you feel? Are you with him? Are you all right with the advancement of how it's changed? What do you think? He, like, the bodybuilders, he would be classic physique today. Like, they compare him to Chris Bumstead. Like, they always put those two together. That's kind of, as you get old, like when you're younger, you want to be that weird, freaky looking person. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, the Chris Bumstead physique and we're more athletic is, I think, the guys are just freaky. It's a cult. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's always a cult. It's always going to be a cult. It's never going to be a mainstream. Jay Cutler won the Olympia four times. He was never in the Boston Herald or the Globe. What's right. that telling you? The great, he's only on the fucking yeah. muscle management magazine exactly. behind Steve right here. He, he's see. all over our industry, but our industry, he, the Globe, the, the Herald and the Globe didn't take it serious. He's Mr. Olympia. I know. Wouldn't you be in the Herald? You would think somebody somewhere would think to be like, okay, hey, so the guy who just got judged as the, I don't know, great, penultimate human physique at the time. Yeah, didn't even make it to the didn't Herald. Didn't even make it to the Herald. Okay, yeah. so that's telling you what the sport is. Yeah. So, I kind of shied away from bodybuilding because it's a political game too, because it's it's a business. Yeah. So the top five guys, I think, who compete at the Olympia, how can you say one's better than the other? They're all amazing. Now it comes down to who can speak. Who do you say, hey, I got a bodybuilding contest coming up. Do you mind coming and guest posing? You say yes. I say how much you're going to give me. Who do you think I'm going to sway? It's a judgmental thing. Yeah. It's, it, it's business asking guys to speak makes no sense it ain't fucking miss universe right but but like, but, but it's still a, they, they still have to they still have to portray the sport they still have to be a spokesperson whatever okay, so you got so sure, you have sure. five guys that are great you're gonna pick the one that speaks the best looks the best does what you ask him to do for your business and that's how the olympias i think are a kind of where powerlifting was i was i wanted to get away from it even though it didn't seem like politics to me Mm -hmm. It was politics because your coaches or whatever is telling who's going to win, who, I mean, who's going to play, who's not going to play, right? Where power lift and I outlift you, I win, brother. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. You can't it's beat me. It's me and you, and if me, I lift more than you, you, that's it. Exactly, just like a prize fight. There's nothing to win. interpret. Nope. It's just a yep. matter you of make, like... You make a clean lift, you win. That's it. That's it. We're pretty much We're it. No judging. What, um, what do you... What do you like for supplements, I, I would like? Like, what do you like for... Is there stuff that you've taken for a long time? I'm not talking about like... Yeah, 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 I'm just talking yeah. about like a... Whatever. Nutrition, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I take a, a whey isolate. I've always taken a whey isolate. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. I kind of mix up some of the brands. I like All Max. Mm -hmm. um, really good. Mutant, pretty good. I, I just mix it up because it's not... Uh, when it comes to the industry, I think like if you have a reputable brand and a, a company's been in business for a while, mm -hmm. reputable brand, 
it just comes down to taste because you're trusting the quality. When they say sure. 22 grams, it's now it comes down to taste. So there's many companies that have great quality, great taste. I just kind of mix it up. Uh, so I think when it comes to any supplement, the companies that have the best reputation that they're not messing around with anything are the ones that are going to be the best ones to go with. I feel like a lot of people have the the top of the line products and brands, so to speak, in this whole bodybuilding environment, fitness world, have been there for a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's right. like anything else. Yeah, they, they, they stand the yeah. test of time. I mean, yeah. I've been in business coming on 38 years. Mm-hmm. There's, there's only probably maybe one company that's been a lot, is that long is probably Universal. Maybe maybe they've been there longer than me. Yeah. But they have changed. Metrics has been around a pretty long time. Metrics, yeah, that's a great yeah. one. Yeah. Lebron yep. has been around a pretty long time. Yeah. Um, but going into the supplement, creatine. Sometimes okay. we do creatine. Uh, yeah. Creatine HGA. I'll mix it up with uh, just regular monohydrate. Yeah. Uh, glutamine for recovery. Cook. Okay. You know, I I, my, I gear up my training um, now more summertime. You know, I mean, I just like being out in the sun training. Winter, sure. I kind of I still train. You are a big outdoor yeah. training guy, huh? Yeah. I was well. I was probably at the beginning the first one to go viral before yeah. COVID because I was the only one outside really training. Then right. once COVID hit, it forced everyone to go out. But I was I was I was viral a lot pre COVID because of my outdoor training right so then when it all then when that all everyone started training outside it became less but i've already set my mark yeah you follow me no absolutely well, so, the, 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 again the yeah. first guy yeah the, first guy. This, this seems to be a recurring theme right yeah um first guy to gang bang yeah, as, yeah. As well. <laughs> <laughs> what um what is can you tell us really quick like what was effort mass like back in the day like, tell us about this place. I feel like it was different, but I'm very interested to hear it here. Uh, like, from a guy who grew up here, like, back in the day. Sports was a, sports was always great. You yeah. had, you had even back then, you had the Eagles and the Huskies. You separated the kids' teams, and they both, Huskies and Eagles, dominated by separating. If you combined them, imagine what you would have had, but you separated them, and they were still dominating everywhere. Yeah. Your hockey was decent back then. Mm-hmm. Your bas- Everett Rats. Everett Rats killed. Peter, my nephew, they, you know, played Powerland. These kids were, these kids looked like they were 18, 19 years old. They were 12 and 13 years old. Rasheed Johnson, the kid was 6'8". Yeah. It, it, just crazy. So Everett's always put out a lot of good athletes. Athletes, yeah. yeah. Athletes. And, you know, if, if street kids were, you know, like we'd have rock fights. There was like, you Jesus know. Jesus fucking crazy. Yeah, really crazy. But, I mean, it was just... It was a tough town, not not a punk town. Just you know, you played you played played football on the park in the winter, tackle football mode. You know, it was just I don't know what they're doing. They're playing Nintendo today and stuff. So when you yeah. find one of these kids that are, I I have another like a second generation nephew, and he's kind of dialed into sports, stays away from the Nintendo. So like my nephew Peter, they're working him into my businesses as I go you got to find the right one to carry it on I want to get to the 50 to the 100 whatever but you have to have the right people in place like I had Peter we you know put this place together he he's been here 28 years this is this is I say it all the time man ANC is like this is the place everybody comes to it's a destination but it, it is the number one volume store in the country Number one. Now, we're not talking, yeah. you know, there might be people making more money. I really don't know. But when it comes to pure volume, because he gives gives good pricing, you know, fair pricing because it's about. I see him do it every time I'm in here. He talks to people almost on like an individual sense. Right. You know what so I'm saying? So you want to, like yeah. So when Amazon and all these things are putting the other people, you know, it Amazon is going to, you know, way to get your stuff on Amazon. But this will always be the niche because you want to come and talk to him. He helps you. He doesn't drive one thing down your face. No, he really knows this shit in here. And it's like a, you never feel like you're getting, like, something just thrown at you and be like, yeah, just take this. Right. And, like, that's it. Right. So He'll tell you step by step what shit does. So that's what it is. So it becomes my showroom. I don't sell wholesale to anyone. This is my place where you can purchase. Peter does the lasering now, which has become a huge, a big, big, Took and taking my business to another level. Every five years, something happens. So this is within the time frame of my five years. Next cycle is the laser belts. So he's taken and I, you know, it was just going to be something simple. Put your name on it, Mark, Lewis, whatever, easy. Yeah, customize it a little but bit. But he work, right? he put his own feel to it. Puts people's family, their dogs, shit that I don't even see. He sees it and puts it on there. So it becomes something special. That's awesome. So which 
what could have been good became great. Because that's be. essentially what the brand is built on. Correct. This is something for you. For you forever. It's a, yeah. You get it as a gift for someone else. Exactly. Like my belt is gifted more than probably people. You, when you, someone who's in the industry, like Vince McMahon got one for Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon, his grandmother got it for his grandson. It's crazy to think about how many, like how well, yeah. many of these belts are out there, We're getting man. It that we just made uh, Brian Cushing. Yeah. His two sons. The Gronkowski's little boys are animals. They're crazy little They bouncers. are, yeah. The dance okay. kids are fucking crazy. Yeah. Yep. And, and Chris. Yep. So they're, you know, so it's almost like, you know, if you're into guns, you get your kid his first gun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here you get This your, was my dad's Winchester 22. Exactly. Here you shit, get, yeah. So you get their first belt. The old man gives him his belt. Even if he puts it on the walls, you're not using it. When you're ready to make that into the world of our world, here's your belt. Can I ask you a question? What is the average timeline, you would say, for like Cardillo belts, like, Custom, the, yeah. Like it, when you build, when you build something for like make a belt yep. for somebody, right? Yeah. Give it to somebody. Yeah. It usually lasts a so, lifetime. It's guaranteed for life. Oh wow. Yeah. So, uh, it it used to be sixteen, but we're amping up a little bit more. So custom belts coming out almost six weeks, which is like. And that's business one hundred and one though, because it's like at that point you are quite literally justifying your price. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah you're yeah. like it doesn't yeah. really like if you're gonna use this for any yes. extended amount of time, it's worth whatever I'm asking. Yeah, just like you know, like you said, your hockey equipment. Like you, you never changed all your gloves every year. You wanted those gloves to you know what I mean. So this is something that's your most personal thing you wear when it comes to training. You change your sneakers, change everything, but your belt. I get certain people literally burning cars. They they just want to get their belt. Their car gets stolen. They just want their belt back. That's how personal it becomes. It's crazy to, to how person. much it, this is. It's and these are an, real stories. These are, you know these aren't no, people aren't yeah. trying to get a no, free belt out of me. They no. just. It's just crazy to think how like, how, this this almost not like, like innocuous item that like you wouldn't have even really thought about, if you were like a casual person. Yep. How it's become this like fucking yes. It's it's now like synonymous with like weightlifting and bodybuilding. Like it's this. You, this is a thing. It's the you, only like you know you, you you always fear like things changing over time. But in this niche of lifting, you ha a belt will never go away. You know what this is? It's a fucking baseball glove. That's what I. That's how I describe it. That's what this is. My, this my is a bodybuilder's weight baseball. You glove. have to have it. You know what if I mean? If you don't have it, it, this will be forever. We you know this is the basic. You know, the basic first, and I've taken it, made it a little more elaborate, but we've fallen back to the basic, and it does really well because of the Peter's tattooing on it. D yeah, the, these all behind look awesome. Like, everything back here, there's different, different colors and stuff yep. like that. There's even a silver one yep. back there. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. What um, what was, oh, no, I just had it on the tip of my tongue. This is going to drive me insane. What the hell is this? Right. Oh, uh. As far as you know, when all your videos, especially on the show, yeah, right. Yeah. By the way, tell them when you can when they can watch the show. Nesson. No, it's on uh, NBC Sports oh, NBC Boston. Yeah. It's for while the Celtics are playing. After one of the games on the weekend, it follows the Celtics game on yep. the weekend. Then it has a set schedule. It used to be seasonal, but now NBC wants to run it every weekend. So Good. it might be sporadic when it's going to be on on the weekend, but it's on every weekend. How have you? How long have you been doing the show? Coming into, if it was a season, we'd be into the third season, but now it'll be just so three years. Three years? Three years. How, I mean, have you, you've, it looks like you've had a blast doing the show. That's yeah, amazing. Like it's a lot of fun for you. It's just a, it's just a natural, again, five years later, I now, after all these years with all of these athletes, I have so many friends. I've never, I really don't ask any for anything. So everyone kind of say, hey, Steve, all these guys, all this stuff, you know, I'd like to, so I said, you know, we can, um, we can do it, you know, my co-host, Mai. Yeah. She's, you know, she's kind of, she has, I can't, my, we you and I are talking okay, but I'm really not a talker. You're a great talker. I'm just answering your questions. You're doing just fine, Steve, I promise. But, but I'm answering your, 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 you're giving me the questions. I can answer the questions. Sure. I can't give the questions. Okay. So she came, you know, they, she has been my spokesmodel for like 15 years. Very smart. So I said, hey, you do the talking. Mm -hmm. I'll do the whatever, the other stuff with the guys. Did she compete before? No, she, but she had a, she had a nice body. Yeah. yeah. No, she's in yeah, good shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's ripped up. So so that's how that, that show all came to be. But it's just, a, you know, an extension of what I do. It's marketing. It's business. It's um, helped to drive the store. Who's been the most physically impressive? I have a feeling I know who this is. That you, like, non-weightlifter that you've worked with, whether it's on the show or they come to do a video for the IG or something like that. I have a guess. Of what? Who like you? Where somebody you were like, this guy's really, 
in phenomenal shape. Somebody who's not a bodybuilder or a weightlifter. This is... But an athlete. Yeah. This is Dana Chara. Chara. I was just going to say that. Uh, it has to be. That's It has to be him. We became... Like, I, I'm out there when it comes to training, right? My nephew will tell you. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you watch I mean, one of Steve's if, videos, you'll see exactly what means. Like, the videos, like, on... Obviously, they're, they're cool for social media and stuff, but, I mean, I've always trained kind of out there. Like, I, I would go to the edge to push myself to the edge. So, Z and I became great friends through training. So, you know, he'll send me some weird videos. Like, yeah, our communication is basically training. That's how our, our friendship is all about training. So, he'll tell me what's going on with the race. He'll send me a new exercise. you like this one. So, yeah, he's, he's, I tell him he's taking it. Like he's running, he just got invited to the biggest uh, triathlon in Europe, and he's gonna go do it. I said, Z, he's like, he's six, seven, nine, yeah, yeah, whatever, he's six, nine, six, whatever he is, man. He, he's he, just fucking gigantic, whatever. Yeah, you're not what he is. You're yeah. not built, man, for for fucking running, man. Yeah. What do you create? You're a biker. You're. A, he won't listen. I said, Nah, he's that guy's. I feel like he's gonna go after anything you put in front of him. Yeah. He's gonna be like, Nah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. He's uh he's he's uh he's got to be the most physically a, impressive yeah. person. And then you know what? No, he tells me I can't believe I still can't believe because like, I was almost ready to kill him. He says his sons were into hockey, and he doesn't want him to be a goalie. Oh wow! I said, imagine what? that. I said what? I said it's the safest position now. When I played, oh, you guys were wearing fucking plastic nothing, shit and nothing, like nothing. pads that were the size nothing. of a leg. I can't believe I, my, if I was a parent, I would not never let my kid play when I played. I can't believe my parents let me. Did you have like the Jerry Chivas mask on? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh that's man. crazy! Yeah, man. so it was like getting. I, at some point, at the very, very beginning, you play with like I, I was at the phase of wearing a mask, but it was almost I, I played sometimes on the ice with no mask. You said, well, "What are you doing? Like, what that's are you doing?" Crazy. Yeah, looking I back, cannot, I no, cannot I can't think it. of that. It, you, that's even wild. if a shot is only ninety miles an hour instead of one hundred twenty, no, even seventy just, mile an hour yeah, slap no. shot to your head no, is, is going to kill you, right? So, so I, so I said it's safe. He, but I, he's thinking they're all shooting one hundred and eight like he is. Like, it, you know, it's, it's so you see this the guys are toothpicks and they look like they're 45 feet wide i know they're so protect you can't get hurt no you can't i he, mean the first big guy to really come and play net was who ken dryden ken dryden he's right a, yeah, he was the man he's still a, he, yeah he's a gigantic dude yep. yeah what's cool he like out. he's all a six four like yeah, two he was a giant he's a, he stole three cups from the bruins yeah that's, and then bernie Perron stole two that they yeah. would they would have had they would have had them all yeah because they had no shot against the oilers no nope. That that was just yeah. that was the oilist yeah. day. That was but they happen. in the seventies you had Montreal, Dryden took two or three of them, and Bernie Perron took two of them. Bernie uh, Perron was playing that for the for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, for the Flyers, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yep, then right. and then then the next came the Gretzky and the Grant Fuelers and all that shit later mm -hmm. on. But that ten year span when they got two, they should have had probably six. If you're gonna watch sports, do you watch hockey? Playoffs. Really? That's it, yeah. You just tune in for the offs. Just, uh, yeah, I respect that. Yeah, I mean, it is what it it's is. Just what, yeah, playoff hockey. There, I mean, there's nothing yeah. like it. Yep. There's, there's absolutely. Do you prefer the game now, or do you like it back in the day? Back in the day, I, I, I'm blown away on how talented they are. It's, it's insane, like putting isn't a it? puck between your legs and it's shoot. That's Nobody kind of, did that back in no. the day. And in that a Michigan play, that's kind of absurd. Yeah, guys I, weren't. You literally couldn't do that. But I don't think you should be able to carry the puck. Weren't dudes playing like? Bobby Hull was the first guy to curve a stick, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Because before, guys used to yeah. just play with a straight blade. Yes, exactly. And that kind of helped goalies when they like weren't yeah, lifting yeah, the yeah, puck yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So now back then, the goalie would make the save. Now then, now if you can get that corner amongst what I have on, good luck to you. That's basically what it would become. But yeah. I, I'm telling you, if I played and they did that in Michigan, every time someone would come around, I'd try to go. Oh, the sticks coming I'd halfway up. Oh, right yeah. I'd be cutting everyone down. You wouldn't come around the net. Thousand percent. And Jerry was chivas. We're... we're become great friends we got to get chivo on this pod man we got to get chivo in <laughs> he, here man I, now out of anyone in hockey the old he's he's the best yeah the greatest person the most giving person good shit the best and he kind of have to be the guy was i mean with that team that like though that era of bruins like they were he, like he was great you know and i a he, lot of he, what he was bobby O's roommate yeah so he has the stories the, oh please and now my <laughs> thing with them is like they really the 70s Bruins, you want to talk about, like, bodybuilding having a pop in Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, what it did for youth hockey back in the day? 20 ranks to, like, 500 ranks. It was crazy. You couldn't get you couldn't get to go up the street without the stick, uh, without the hockey nets being moved from street hockey. Yeah, because my old man, my old, my dad's yeah. 59. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, so he fine. got to see, yeah, so he got to see the, the you know, obviously the 70 and 72 yeah, Cup yeah, as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, he was like, you have no idea. No idea. How insane. You can't even, like, the Patriots winning, uh... 
the Celtics, all these parades, nothing like the Bruins. Yeah. The, the, you couldn't drive up a street without someone moving a hockey net. It was just everywhere. It, huh? Everywhere. It was just crazy. He was, he was, but he, he's super humble about it. Like I, you know, when I played, I wanted to like be him. I, I really wanted to be, he was, he was my idol. So I, he was great. And that's why when you talk to him about it, he says, Steve, he said, I, we'd win the games eight to five. I let in five goals, we'd still win. You know, I'm not as great as you. He right. does, he's very humble about it. But I said, what are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Like, cause he, he, when he played with, with Bobby, there's no, there's really no pressure. Well, they also, like, goaltending was just different back in the day. Right. Guys were, like, out of the net. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Diving around, flying yeah, around like yeah, crazy yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Nowadays, these kids are all 6'4". Right. And just, like, in the net and, like, just... It's dialed in. Di dialed in, exactly. But, you know, what the point he's, he's getting to is, you know, if you're, if you're winning by four goals, you can play differently. Yeah. You can be free. Sure. So he played free. Yeah. With, if it's a one nothing game or you lose a one nothing, you got to play different. So True. he pay, he had the freedom to play. So Absolutely. he won't, he will never, he'll never, he'll, he kind of gets kind of angry if I tell him he's the best. Did you ever have a desire to personally train? Like personally coach? Like, did you ever, or did you've done that? You've done yeah, that done for that. like, yeah, yeah. oh, so you've taken on like clients, like somebody that's like, right, listen, so, Steve, I'm trying to compete still, in 12 weeks. Like, no, it was like, uh, it was getting like, I used to train in 90, Steve Collins was the New England, uh, he was the New England bodybuilding, uh, New England boxing champion. Okay. He came to me to make him a, a championship belt. Long story short, we became friends. I ended up training him for three years, his nutrition and his weights. The, the Haglers trained him in the in the ring. So I would train people like, I, I can't, like I could never train someone who wanted to be good, but really didn't put the effort towards it. Mm -hmm. Like he, even my nephew, I trained him when he was younger, yep. wrote a book about him. He had the eye of the tide, he was passionate. So whatever you tell him to do, you do it. You can't tell someone you can't do it and they do it, you know what I mean? So I only trained people of that level that I got you. wanted to. Yeah, because otherwise you're like, listen, at that point, a guy like you's got to sit there and be like, listen, I don't need the fucking money. Yeah, exactly. I don't need to like really do this. I'm get, uh, like, I need to kind of like be satisfied yes. with this more than anything. Yeah, you want the production, but I mean, yeah. at that time, I, I mean, I, I would have been great to have been making money that way, but I just couldn't. You have to want it. Anything, anything, business, training, you, you have to want it, man. Yeah, you, you no, to, I, I say this all the time. You really can't operate in life with a plan B. No. Like, you really have to, like, uh, th uh, anybody really who's, like, just a successful, like, pedal-to-the-metal person, you ha don't have a failure plan. No. Because that you're just planning to fail. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're planning, like, oh, if this doesn't work Correct. out. I mean. No, I told myself, I'm like, no, this is, like, working. You've been, what, you've been at the social for 10 years? 10, oh, this is my 11th year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I made okay. no money doing it for nine and a half years. There you go. Okay. And now I've been full-time. In August will be two years right you've done an amazing like people think like nine years is a long t nine years is a long time but you put all that work in to get to where you are my first 25 years i took every penny i made yeah put it back into my business mm -hmm. back kept giving and giving right. and giving i wouldn't be where i am today if you didn't do this it's a long it's like you know it's kind of like sprinting not knowing where the finish line is are you willing to keep running if you don't yeah. see the finish line. I t put it this way. I always told people, I go, listen, if I don't make it, I'll, I'll be 95 years old and croak in, a, in an audition room or something. Right, but you enjoy what you do. That's so what I'm oh, you, I'm having a blast. Even yeah. if you don't make it, you're still, you're still having a great time. But yeah. you are going to make it because look where you look where you are now. Yeah, you, I mean, like, I would consider myself as, like, making it to a certain extent. Let's, like, dude, I, Steve, I live, like, the best life ever, honest to Christ. Like, I'm lucky as shit. I wake up every day at 10 a.m., um, if I send these kids a text about something stupid, me rescheduling a pod or doing something moronic, they're like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I, I wake up, I go to, I go to my personal trainer. That's at 11 o'clock, two days a week. Um, sometimes I'll take a meeting. I skate and play hockey at night. If I have a video to film, I film it. Yeah, that's it. So, so at the end of the day. You're really never working. No, I don't. I literally don't work. Right. I'm literally the luckiest you have, person. You, on the have, you have fun. So even Correct. if you weren't a gazillionaire, you have enough money to do yeah. all the things you want to do. And and that's that's really what it's absolutely. That's what it's Pete's a goddamn slave to this place. Sometimes I think about can I take him and just get him out of here? You know right. what I mean? But he, but he, 
He loves this shit, though. He loves this. Is, this is his deal. You know what yeah. I mean? He, he gets to cut and do his thing he wants to do. And, I mean, in, in, within here, um, he's built something best in the country is, is quite an accomplishment. You know what I mean? So not because he's my nephew, but no, he's I... done something. And when every time I talk about him. Had a rub, I'd had a rub off somewhere. 27 years. I couldn't do it, but he can do it. He's done it. But that's what makes this place work. Exactly. You're the guy who's like the guy behind the scenes face guy that everybody and then you need him out in front to yeah. be himself yeah you gotta have you Pete, gotta, what's the most commonly sold su uh, substance supplements sorry not that kind of shop uh <laughs> fuck it, at this place uh, creatine creatine yeah, and then pre-workout pre-workout and stuff i know the pre-workout's bigger than everything huh yeah. what did you do did they, did they have that like wh how did no. pre-workout become uh, a thing or i don't know well you guys just do it smelling I salts back in the day even, yeah smelling salt but uh I didn't get into, I didn't start drinking coffee till I was like 45 years old. Oh, no shit? Yeah, so I never had any stimulus. Like a can of Coke would send me off. So I Oh, yeah, you'd be in fucking yeah, Neptune. I never even used any anything to get me ready for a workout because I was mentally ready. But, th I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of, there's, I mean, I, I even dabble like half of this, half of that. But sure. even too much will, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of at that point where I, I just train. You know what I mean? I don't have to get geeked out to get a workout and I'm no like, you're just I'm like passing. i'm here doing this yeah, like this is what i want to like maintain so yeah. every year i can maintain what i'm doing i'm really gaining because i'm supposed to be losing a one percent of muscle a year if i can maintain that that means i'm gaining one percent muscle a year. what is your opinion on trt um if you test like what's yeah your, if yeah. you need it if you def, absolutely if you need it why not so put it this way i'm gonna use myself as okay. an example right so i'm on my fifth month coming in now yeah. right yeah i'm now on sipanate yeah one milligram a week yeah two doses monday thursday thursday shot one day shot one day yeah right uh i go in october i just felt like shit i had gained 25 pounds in a year and a half yeah and i wasn't eating like crazy yeah i can tell you honest to god like yeah. really wasn't yeah working out getting no results this that and the other thing sluggish having trouble getting hard all this other stuff right yep. every like low t box yep like, yeah, check it, right there. yeah so i go into northeast men's health quick plug they do the test my test comes back 320 yeah supposed Fear, to be yeah. in the for a guy in your third in your 30s Six i think the eight. minimum is to be Six five eight. technically yeah, five, they say yeah, yeah. which is still yeah. even too yeah. low in yeah. my opinion yeah but um yes yeah, so it's taken a while i've been on peptides now as well for a month and a half yeah uh, it begins with an S. Don't know exactly what it's called, but it doesn't matter. It's a little like dissolvable thing I put okay. under my tongue at night. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm on I'm on Sipanate. Yeah. And I the way I look at it is like, this is something your body naturally produces. Yes. And if you have a deficiency, why, why would you it, not it, like? It's legal. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like Danabol. No. You know what I'm saying? Your body makes testosterone. Yeah. Different shit happens to guys yeah. and yeah. girl, whoever. And, that make and, it, and you're not going to be Mr. Olympia by taking just test. Yeah, exactly. no, so absolutely you, exactly. not, bro. So, it's so, more of a vitality and energy correct, thing than anything. Exactly. I feel like it's going to give you an edge, but it's going to give you an edge in everything. So it's not you're not going to be Mr. Olympia. Don't plan on that. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> the, yeah, C bum never looked at anybody and was like, yeah, just test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, absolutely. Why not? Who is it's the best very, bodybuilder in your opinion? Like the physique you enjoy to see in a bodybuilder or a fitness competitor, or whatever that you've seen. Who's your favorite? A a any generation? Absolutely. Lou Ferrigno is pretty low. Yeah, Lou, that's a good pick. Yeah. Lou is jacked. Yep. Lou is, he's still jacked. Yep. That's the thing with these bodybuilder guys, man. They're jacked like forever. Yep. They really are. Yep. Your buddy Tom Platts, yep. he's still got the, the quads yep. in the next yeah, month. He's great. Right? Is he the best quads of all time? Yeah. Paul right. DeMeo was getting close there in, in his prime. Really? Yeah, he was great. They were, Paul was a great person too. And um, Lou have a better chest than Arnold? Yeah, I think he's Arnold, bigger. Arnold's Arnold, you know what I mean? But Lou, right. Lou is pretty, pretty. Lou is the Lou and, is. And I yeah. kind of like him more, like uh, say ten pounds over contest shape, a little smooth, like when uh, Arnold played Conan the Barbarian, the first one. Yeah, he was, he was fucking just, jacked. Yeah, just big, and I, I, I kind of like the smoother look, look yeah, aesthetic yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that would be like uh, so. I'm trying to think, like, my personal opinion, like, on guys I always saw were like, dude, this guy's, like, Steve Reeves. Yeah, Steve Reeves. That guy yeah, was yeah, the fucking yeah, man. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Good yes. looking dude with, like, yeah, the sunglasses the whole, and yeah, the goatee and yes, shit. Yep. I'm like, that guy's the yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. He, um, he, he was getting and everything. He was. He was wasn't the, he Hercules? Yeah, Hercules, the real Unchained, the greatest. Yeah, that was, that was kind of one of those movies that 
when you when you're young, you look and say, "I want to, I want to well, be wanna, this I guy." Wanna, yeah, yeah, that guy. Well, yeah, they, he, they used to put him in magazines. Yeah, but they used to put him in magazines. You remember, like driving what, like like Corvettes with yeah. fucking broads in yeah, the back yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, this guy's the man. I want to be yeah. this dude. Yeah, he was. He was probably um, like the first influential when you when you go to the movies, Hercules on Chain. You want to look like that. Dude. Yeah, like he was the first. I feel like bodybuilder that they put in like the pop culture like yeah. zeitgeist. You know what I mean? And then like he came. Uh, his name was uh, Smith. Um, I forget his first name, Smith, but he was a, a movie called um, C.C. Ryder with Joe Namath. Oh, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Yes. And he was jacked. His arms. I, I was an arm freak back then looking at uh, arms. Real. Oh, so you were, I wish I could think you were the seps were your thing? Yes, I Who's got it. the best sep of all time? <sighs> oh, God. Arnold's got some. Arnold's got the yeah, best set. we talk about Big Papa Pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but Ar Arnold's got the best. In yeah. my opinion, yeah. like, you look at the guy's arm, like, yeah. flexed if out. You, like, if you see some of the pictures in the younger day on the wall, Arnold was always on. Arnold and Lou were always on the wall. Yeah, Tom that's Platt's true. Tom in there. I got to say, yeah, but like you said, and you know what's funny really quick about Lou as we wrap up here? Him on The Incredible Hulk looks smaller than when he was, like, competing. Yeah. Like, he, it was yeah. different. He looks, like, much more, like... Almost yep. like Rick Rudish. Yes. Like more compact and more like yes. still shredded. Don't yes. get me wrong, but yes. like, uh, did you notice that or like, yes. what do you think that is? Do you think why would they not want him to be? Uh, because I don't think he wanted to do like heavy drugs while he's taping a movie. Yeah, I guess for that's so fair. Long, you know what I mean? Right. So he was obviously those guys are smart, health conscious, and now yeah. that goes back to my closing point. Yeah. You get these guys like Conseco. Especially even just that kind of started the conversation, you could say, right? With, like, steroids and professional baseball. Made his belt. It's then, right? I've heard he's, like, not a bad guy. Not a bad guy. No. Like, and you, if you listen to him talk about baseball, too, because yeah. I'm a baseball, I still play. Yeah. He's, like, a super smart guy. Yeah. I'm like, this guy's not some, like, juiced no. out moron that, no. like, I thought he was. No, he's, like, no. a very smart no. dude. Like, he right. was basically, his book in Juiced, remember, I read it in high school, and he was basically, like... The right combination of steroids, not overdone, yeah. like supervised the right way, yep. can definitely help people. Yeah, It's when guys overdo it yeah. and pump their face full of, right. you know, you could tell right. that giant Mark McGuire yeah. jaw thing. Yeah. You could tell when guys are juiced out of their tree yep. to a point where you're like, this guy's going to have problems at some yep. point, right? Yep. Um, did you, were you able to notice as a guy, again, who was like a, a pro in the fitness bodybuilding world and all this other stuff? Were you able to notice, like, watching sports be like, guys on juice? <sighs> You're like, yeah, the jowls, yeah, yeah like, his, like his traps. But I mean, Barry, I mean, Barry Bonds, you know what I mean? He, they, they, Did you mean Barry? Yeah, I made his belt. Barry Bonds. Oh, shit. Maguire, Canseco, Clemens, Jeter, all of them. All yep. the Yankees. But I met all these people, like, when I look at, like, a, a, a drug person, I look at, like, a bodybuilder. That, to me, that's like a, but, like. Like Mike, when Mike Tyson, when Mike Tyson was 12 years old, he was better built in 19. Legitimately, 20, he was. 30, he okay? looked like he was 19. Exactly, but that's why he's the world champion because he was gifted at 12 years old. So Mark McGuire, Conseco, Bonds, they were gifted before they started. People don't realize this is what people don't realize about Barry Bonds. Pete remembers this obviously. Barry Bonds before he did roids, presumably. Yeah. Was still a Hall of Famer. Yeah, no kidding. Don't get me wrong. Do I think he should be in the Hall of Fame? No. I think sports in this type, yep. not bodybuilding, totally yeah, yeah, different. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is about what the human body can accomplish yes. naturally, yes. and that's what makes you champion the yeah. individuals, the special guys. Like I, I personally, I don't think Bo Jackson ever touched anything. Right. I think he was just physically Gifted. a freak, yeah. just a gift. Why not? Jim Thorpe, same thing. Yeah. Why can't Jim they Brown? Be? Yeah, exactly. Because they look good, they got to be on drugs. That's Absolutely. Not the case. Yeah. They're, they're gifted. And the funny thing about Bo is he's another guy. He says it never touched a weight. Right. And you remember what he looked yeah, like in his exactly. prime? Yeah. Guy looked like a freaking statue, yeah. right? Barry Bonds was still... A freak. A freak. Exactly. Like he, dude, he won like eight gold gloves in a row with the Pirates. Yeah, like, exactly. Was like hitting like 45 home runs a year. And he trained intensely. And he trained intensely. Yeah, but he also like, if you remember what he was built like, Steve, he was like a 6'3", 185, 190 pound, like yes. kind of like long and wiry yep. guy. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. He wasn't built like a... You looked at him in his later career with the Giants and stuff like that. You were like, oh, this guy's a fucking, he yeah. looks like a fucking G.I. Joe. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. So whatever choice Barry Bonds made yep. late in his career, yep. put it this way. Steve will tell you, this isn't rocket science. You do not get bigger as you get older. No. 
that just doesn't happen anyway. Oh. No, no, in no way, shape, or form does that right. happen. Exactly. Like you said, you're supposed to lose. Uh, 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 you're supposed to lose one percent after you get in, like I don't know, forty years old, whatever. Right, maybe, whatever. exactly. So, That's just like m genetics. Correct. So, like I said, if you can maintain, that means you gained. Sure. And we're, and we're good. That's so fair. The key is to gain. You stay the same. Like I don't look to. I look to. Once I go to a certain age, I just wanted to look the same. Yeah, you're like I'm good with this. Let I'm, me just like I just show. want to hold on. If I can hold on to this, I'm good. Yeah. When you're younger, I want to get better and better and better. Thousand percent. You get to a point, say, okay, if I can just hold this for one more year, mm -hmm. I'm one more year closer. That's what a lot of people will say about like somebody like Chris Hemsworth. Yep. Guy who plays Thor. Yep. That last Thor, Thor and Love and Thunder movie. Like, you, do you do you watch more plates, more dates no. on YouTube? No. Oh, I'll say, Pete, do you? You guys both are crazy for now, but he's like a guy who's like a fitness guy. He will like look at guys' physique and be like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's taking this, this, and this right. at this you know, dosage and whatever. He's not against steroids, the guy Derek that runs it. He's like a wicked cool guy. Yep. He just talks about like somebody will be like, what do I, he'll, or he'll look at somebody like Chris Hemsworth playing Thor and be like, this is what I think they had him do workout wise right. to get him in this shape. Right. But he'll, he'll be point out and be like, he's at his genetic peak. Yes. Because they're like, the guy's 41. That's probably the best he's going to naturally yes. ever look in his yes. life. exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But to close, like you said, you've done an amazing job. I've been doing this close to 40. You, but 10 years where you're at is really, especially in the social media world. Yeah, it's still a new frontier, you exactly. know? Exactly. It's the Wild West, and you've done an amazing job. Amazing, Steve. Thank you. I'm not just like I said. Yeah. I wouldn't be sitting here taking this because uh, I don't really do too many of these. But I saw your stuff. Thank I you. like what you do. I tell Appreciate people it. about it. Thank you. And you, you got a futures, futures bright. Thank you. I'm trying. Yeah, like you know what I mean. I, I I've always said I kind of do this just me. Now these guys are like attached here. Now you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they're strapped in for this ride. Yeah, that's what it's they're called. strapped in for the ride, whether they like it or not. Uh, the boys are about <laughs> to sign a multi-month deal, by the way. So should, yeah. So there we go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that's and yeah, no, like I said, I um, this is how I run the show. Yeah. It's literally just this. It's two people talking. It's all yeah, but there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. No, no, no. I'm not reinventing the, the wheel. The smaller, the smaller the circle, the better it is. My that's all it is. So tight, it was like a pin drop. I know. But that's how. That's the best way of doing. It. But you're on. You know, you're doing amazing. Like I said, I hope to get my social. You know, you have a hundred thousand dialed in right here in massachusetts i mean i'm all over the place so it's we more, talked about that yeah, remember yeah you know that was saying? like me and you talking on the phone that day i was like yeah. listen i want people to know like this guy is like an everett this guy's an everett guy like he's a local guy yes. like you know what i mean but what you've done with your social media in this area is a goal for me to like you know get in this area you know what i'm saying i'm yeah. all over the place so someone in south korea or russia it's all over the place it is where it's much nicer what you're doing to be controlled at what you're doing like who gives a shit about i mean obviously you want to be in california but massachusetts is no here. i mean like what am i gonna do like uh, some guy in idaho watches my shit like all right like if you're really into yeah, that exactly. kind of stuff like okay yeah, exactly cool, sweet but, but this like, is your this is your niche yeah so you keep smashing this niche and my thing is always to be i never wanted to just be like a massachusetts guy you know what i'm saying because yeah. i feel like i've always wanted to get out and start here build yeah. here yeah you gotta go here and then move outward yeah. You know what I mean? We have an L.A. trip planned in about a month and a half. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be doing that. And that's like the Take first the show start on the road. road. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's go. exactly what this but is. The road what is on the show. you've done here in 10 years is pretty wild. They, and like like I said, nobody even really knew who I was until a year and a half ago. Like, that was it took it took almost a decade to get anybody to know what. But you know what, though? Honest Christ, Steve. Yeah, but you're only, worth it. But you're only 32? Yeah. Holy shit. Look I used to think I was getting old. And then, like, people, like, you know, that, that are you know, old, even older than my dad are like, dude, you're, listen. You really don't realize how young you still yeah. are. People used to think like 32 was like an old. I used to like get more. 32 yeah. is nothing. Like I said, it, you started when you were 20, 20, 20, 21. Yeah, yeah, about that. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is like for people that like freak out about getting older, somebody put it to me this way and I, I've never looked at it the same. They're like, are you like mad that you're like still alive? <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, you know, just, you know what? Yeah, like, no, I'm not. There's yeah, people just, that get told every day, yeah, yeah cancer, uh, came yeah, back, exactly. there's nothing we can do. Yeah, 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 somebody gets into a car accident and shit. No, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, no, so you're doing, thank on you. the outside looking in, it's been around a while, you're doing the right thing. Thank you. You've developed something great. 
I'm a respectable young man, Steve. That's what I try to be. Yeah, just, you know what I mean. Just give back to the people. Don't forget the people. My whole thing is loyalty. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Pete said, "Hey, will you do this with Mark?" I said, "Absolutely." One night, he, my nephews kind of gave me their word up to the other guy to do it with. I, I, I said to Pete, "I go, do you think we get Steve out of his? Can we get Batman out of the Batcave? What do you think?" And he was like, "It's got to be a real special occasion to summon him into the public yeah. eye." Said, but if he asked me like anything, he asked me, I, you know, I, I would do because he knows who I am. You know what I mean? Well, let's like I said, I, I hope this isn't the. Obviously, I don't anticipate this being the only time me and you were like hanging out or yeah, like yeah, whatever yeah, the hell. Yeah. So, yeah, I some cool like this with. Yeah, yeah, that's let's. I'm sure this is not going to be the last time that you see Steve and I doing some form of like content video media. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. Um, I that I think this was a great episode. I'm you were fantastic. This is awesome. That's going to be the first episode of Shut Up, Mark. Thank you to our sponsor, by the way. And that's a wrap on episode the first ever filmed episode of Shut Up, Mark. This is Steve Cardillo. It was an honor. Thank you very much. Great first job, everybody. Great first show, everyone. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Yeah, thank you.